So what is hand launch gliders all about? In this short video, the sport of hand launch gliders will be quickly overview to give you insight into this exciting model aerosport. A hand launch or discus launch glider normally has a wingspan of 1.5 meters and weighs about 210 to 250 grams. The glider is held by the wingtip on a throw peg to launch it like a discus throw by rotating fast around the flyer before the release. With modern gliders built very light but strong from carbon composites, the plane can be launched on average between 40 to 60 meters and the better throwers go between 70 and 90 meters and even more. The glider is controlled by a radio transmitter and modern radios allow for many complex programs to get the optimal settings applied for different stages of launch, flight of which mostly is thermaling and also approach and landing. The gliders have elevator and rudder control but also big ailerons that functions in addition as flaps to optimize wing profiles for thermaling and slows down the plane for landing. The modern S3K gliders are built from carbon composites with very sophisticated airfoils to minimize drag and maximize lift. The gliders cost in the range of $100 to $900. The DLV is a very popular glider sport with the official FAI sport class called S3K. The competitions are held on a flat field where there are less effects of turbulence and rich lift and the pilots need to use their launch and thermal activity to gain altitude and sustain flight for the duration of the tasks in the working time. To read the air, the pilot must be trained and experienced in reading and interpreting the signs such as surface wind velocity, the direction and the direction changes of the wind and the subtle variations in temperature. Signs such as birds and insects quite often give indication of the position of thermals. The behavior of the plane in the air also provides feedback to the pilot to determine the position of thermals to maximize the utilization of this rising air columns to gain altitude and to sustain flight for the required time to complete a certain task. In a FRK competition there are many predefined tasks. In smaller competitions there will be at least 6 tasks but in larger competitions the task can range between 8 and 20 that can run over several days with the top 10 or 12 pilots then competing in a final set of rounds. In a competition there are normally a caller assisting the pilot to help with air reading and to ensure the plane is spotted against all the other planes in the sky. There is also a timer to time each flight with a stopwatch. In smaller competitions the caller or assistant can also be the timekeeper. A task is flown in a working time period of usually 10 minutes. Most tasks fit exactly in 10 minutes and every second counts. The pilot may launch the glider at the start of the working time indicated by an alarm. The timer or competition director will indicate the working time left to the pilot in order to time his flights. The flight time ends when the glider touches the ground or any obstacle near the ground, when it is caught by the pilot or at the end of the working time. An example task is where the pilot must fly a 1 minute, 2 minute, 3 minute and 4 minute flight in any order in the 10 minutes working time. As landing or catching takes a couple of seconds, some of the flights will not be completely 1, 2, 3 and 4 minutes in total. The flight closest to the time will be allocated to the target time, or the longest flight will count towards the 4 minute and the second longest to the 3 minute and so on. Time of each flight is added together and the pilot with the most time wins the round and his score is normalized to a thousand points and all others receive a relative score of their time normalized against the best score. Some tasks are very strategic in nature and the pilot need to make informed decisions in the task especially in very challenging conditions. An example of such a task is the last two flights that count. The pilot can fly any number of flights in a 10 minute working time but only the last two flights count. If the pilot then does a good flight but the next flight is less good, he needs to decide whether it will be better to fly another flight which may be better or worse than the previous flight. As soon as the pilot launches however the next flight has started. There are also tasks where quick launch techniques are crucial for example in the 5 by 2 minute flights. As the maximum of 5 by 2 minutes is 10 minutes there are no time to relaunch and every second wasted is of your score. A flight cannot exceed 2 minutes. The timer will stop the time at 2 minutes but the pilot must land and relaunch or most often in this task the pilot will catch and throw in one motion to limit the time the plane is in his hands for a maximum of a second or two. And so the scores of the different rounds add up and the winner of the contest is determined. In large competitions the pilots are normally randomly selected against each other to make up groups of 8 to 15 pilots at a time and the normalization of the scores help to normalize the changing weather conditions. 
All the groups in a round will always fly the same task. Contact the glider pilots in your area to get involved in this sport.